Welcome to the Real Estate and Small Business for Management Consultant Show. Whether you hold a corporate nine to five or have determined that you want to explore the small business realm, this show is for you. Christian Carrillo talks to entrepreneurs and experts in the real estate and small business realms to discover what they do, why they do it, and how they do it to help show you the art of the possible. And now your host, Christian Carrillo. Welcome back to the Real Estate and Small Business for Management Consultant Show. I am your host, Christian Creo. Today, we've got a, a special interview for you folks. Uh, my, uh, my, my dear friend, Pedro Montesinos, I'm surprised he's back in the U.S. He's usually in Latin America or in Europe or God knows where, always traveling for work. But Pedro, it, tru- it truly is a pleasure to have you on the show, my friend. Thanks for hopping on. It's my, it's my pleasure, man to be in the land of opportunity, the United States of America, the (laughs) land where my parents came to fucking execute. There you go. There you go. So Pedro is an entrepreneur and investor who believes in using capitalism to free yourself from bondage. A man who leverages his businesses to achieve time freedom, location freedom, and financial freedom. This philosophy he applies personally and for the people he works with to find investment opportunities worth pursuing. He structures businesses in a way that is not only profitable for the business owner, but also low maintenance. And I I want you all to remember those words because we're going to come back to them multiple times, right? But Pedro's philosophy is, is this idea, understanding that we don't want to become slaves to the business that we own, right? So again, Pedro, welcome to the show. We're really grateful for your time and I'm super excited for this because I, I know you're going to give our listeners a lot of actionable insights, but you know, why, why don't you get us started with a little bit more about who you are and what you do? Okay, it's um, pretty straightforward. I'm from Rhode Island, right? Uh, and I started working maybe summer jobs when I was like 16 and I found out immediately that uh, my personality didn't gel at all with uh, working nine to five. And personally, I thought I was more capable than most of the people that managed me. Whether that was delusional or whether that was correct, we found out I was probably right. <laughs> so, uh, what happened was I just tried to find ways to make money. And uh, through a lot of trial and error, uh, we were able to execute uh, various businesses that run without my physical presence that I can run from anywhere. So maybe in my description, uh, it might get confusing if uh, you're like, oh, what business do you own? Well, I own a lot of service businesses, specifically like a translation company, a virtual assistant Mm -hmm. business a junk removal business. Uh, I'm a realtor in Punta Cana, right? I have a bookkeeping business. And then you're like, okay, why do you have all this stuff? Uh, The reason I can have multiple businesses is because I delegate all my businesses in a way where I don't need to to be involved in the daily operation of none of them. Mm. So, So once I build the business and I delegate it appropriately, I have all my time. And then I can start another business from scratch and then build it in a way that is totally delegated. And then I'm done with that. And then I go on to the next one. And then I just keep building like passive online sources of income, right? But the process took a while. Uh, I I always knew what I wanted the end result to be, Mm -hmm. which was time freedom, location freedom, financial freedom. Uh, I'm 31 currently. And I started on this journey when I was 18. So I didn't really, it's not the next day, right? Um, I started my first business at 18. And now, you know, 18 to 28, that's 10 years, you know, then you add three more. So I've been 13 years attempting and being an active student Mm. uh, with business. So if you think about something every day for 13 years, you're going to learn you're going to learn things. Um, Overall, um, going through certain 
I, I used to, when I was younger, I used to apply to certain incubator programs, like where startups go and shit like that. And I used to pitch some ideas that of some things, some websites I had built. And I remember they had some founder one time that really impacted me because he had said, he had sold his company for like more than a hundred million dollars. But then he, he came back and he was talking about how if he were to start all over again, he would think about the lifestyle he wants to lead on a daily basis and then mold the business around that lifestyle mm. versus just get this money and screw the lifestyle. Because most of the time, uh, what we really want is a lot more accessible or cheaper than what we might have thought, you know? So, um, so another book that impacted me in, in that regard was like the four hour work week. That's mm -hmm. exactly why I started a business so young. Cause when I was like 16, I read this book, the four hour work week. And he was talking about virtual assistants, about testing businesses before, uh, you invest and all this other stuff. But, you know, theory and application are totally different. Yep. Absolutely. Like, I think the guy was legit, Tim Ferriss. Um, it sounded like a fairy tale when somebody tells you, oh, yeah, you can spend like less than five, 10 hours a week on your business uh, and uh, still profit or reach record profits. And that's something that I was able to see before the pandemic. I did a world trip to 18 countries. I started in Japan with my cousin and it took us 45 days, you know, from Japan, South Korea, Philippines, uh, India, Turkey, uh, Greece, Italy, France, Amsterdam, Paris, Portugal, Spain, Egypt, like the pyramids, Dubai, all that stuff, we just went back to back. And, and I wasn't really paying attention to my businesses at that time, but I had strong cash flow every month because uh, it really didn't matter what country I was in. As long as I had an internet connection, I didn't have to take customer service calls, respond to emails, coordinate any projects, onboard any clients, service any clients, do any type of technical assistance, do any bookkeeping for that matter. And then every month I would still get a PL from my full-time bookkeeper. Uh, I'd get reports from customer service and everything else. So I think that uh, uh, being able to realize kind of what I wanted, that's, that's kind of what I want to continue uh, to do. It's more of a lifestyle thing. Hey, but maybe you don't want to visit a whole shit ton of countries. That's okay. You know, maybe you just want to chill with your kids in, in your house and not have to worry about, you know, clocking in somewhere. Um, it's about the freedom to do whatever the hell you want. So um, anytime, anywhere with cash was kind of the filter I put businesses through uh, before I even engage in them, mm. right? Um, so that's like a, a little intro. Um, in my personal opinion, um, if you're not interested in being totally free, like on a day-to-day -day basis, then maybe this particular interview with me, you should skip it, right? Because certain people are very passionate about, you know, they're a graphic designer and they love graphic designing every day. They love working for that corporate firm and they love doing that shit. Some people just love being a doctor and they want to put in the 80, 100 hours per week, whatever, to be a doctor and they love that shit. Uh, overall, almost all the jobs I tried before, I hated, you know, maybe because it wasn't directed to where my passion lay. Um, but uh, I saw that I need, I wanted to find an alternative to it. The first business that I set up, I just got lucky that later on I could delegate in a way that it was automatic, automated. 
but I didn't start off saying, oh, my business got to be automated. I just said, I need money. I'm broke, you know? So <laughs> I just started doing whatever work. So, um, so if you're pissed off, if you want to change, what are some steps you can take and how can I condense 13 years in something that's actionable for you, right? First thing I would say is fuck your passion. Fuck whatever your passion is because some people are like, oh, my passion is always to have been open a restaurant because they tell me I cook so good or whatever, or I wanna be a hairstylist because all my sister's always looking cute because I do her hair type shit. I'm not saying that you couldn't be successful. There's plenty of people that are, you know, um, whether it's even, you know, either with salons or hair products or in every industry, you're gonna find people that made stupid money, every single industry. Um, but you should focus more on what you see a demand for, right? Instead of what, because at the end of the day, capitalism is all about solving other people's problems, right? If you, if you live somewhere, you pay rent because they solved the problem, uh, they gave you somewhere to live. If you go to the grocery store, they solved the problem, now you have food, et cetera. And uh, we were able to see in the pandemic at least what problems were essential and what problems were not essential, right? So um, I would focus on, okay, is there a need for it? And then you, you get to analyze, okay, is the need elastic or inelastic? You know, in economics, uh, an elastic need, when the price changes, the demand changes for it. And then an inelastic need, it doesn't matter really where the price goes, the demand remains the same, like gasoline, you know, like medicine. Like if your grandma's medicine doubles in price, you're still going to buy it? Probably, if her life depends on it. Right, and then you just got to be real whether your 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 business is elastic or inelastic, and then you gotta um, go for yours. Now, how can you go for yours? Great. What do I recommend to the broke ass people in the twenty first century who live in America and who want to get started, who don't know what the hell to do, and who got no capital to put up, and all you would do, all you have is a G and a dream. <laughs> you know, what, what would I say? First off, service businesses, mm -hmm. service businesses, service businesses, service businesses allow you to have zero or very little, you know, fixed costs. And if you don't know what the hell you're doing because you're starting, you need zero to little fixed costs so you can learn, it gives you time to learn. It's like, you know, when they give you a vaccine, supposedly the virus they put in you is like a very weakened version of what they, of what it actually is to give your body time to actually learn how to deal with it. Right. So in the same way, having low fixed costs allows you like infinite time to figure out what you're doing, especially when you don't have any, uh, any customers to cash flow. It allows you to win when you get a customer, but not lose when you don't. Mm. So you can sharpen your skills on the way. So what are some examples of service businesses? Well, just Google service businesses specifically, but there are service businesses that I, I don't, I'm not a part of like being a mechanic is a service business. If you just knew all the mechanic things and you didn't have a shop, uh, you know, you add value by going and actually fixing things. But I needed, so the first thing was service for me. And then the next thing was, can I provide this remotely? Mm -hmm. Right. And then, you know, there's a whole list of things that uh, you could, you could do if you go online, they have, uh, you know, whether it's Forbes or entrepreneur.com or all these other websites, they'll give you like a list of like 200 service type businesses. Uh, that's one. So number two, if if you want to if you want to snipe something, you know, for real and hit a target, I would recommend business to business, B to B. Why? Because I've lost way too much money with Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads. It's been like a money pit 
a, a dark hole where I throw my money and I never see it come back. <laughs> so have other people made it work? Absolutely, I commend them. I haven't found the recipe to that, yeah. you know? And then in the when you read the Art of War, it says, you know, if the enemy, you got to hit him where it's weakest. Mm -hmm. you know? So if you see you're not the strongest player with the AdWords, because other people have way more budget than you and can click on your ads or your shit's barely seen, then you got to go where the competition's less, right? And I think B2B, you don't even need AdWords or anything. You know, a concept in business you should always go for is you want to go straight to the source, right? You want to go straight to the source with your customers and you want to go straight to the source with your suppliers, right? So right now, Google's, Google, Facebook, and whatever, they're being intermediaries between you and the customer. However, if you had your own database, you could talk to your customer, your potential customer, whenever you want. Mm. You could email them, you could text them, you can send them mailings, send them brochures, et cetera. And there's no intermediary you have to continue to pay to communicate with them and have them purchase from you. Yeah. And it's your, you can make a database for B2B uh, on your own. How? Let's say, to give you an example, uh, let's say I sell pizza boxes to pizza shops, right? If you do a quick Google search, if you're in Dallas, you say, you know, pizza shops in Dallas and Google will come up with all the pizza shops. You know, they all need boxes. Some of them may need them customized, but they all need boxes. The difference is who they're going to buy the box from, right? Mm -hmm. So um, in the same way, there's a whole bunch of intangible services like bookkeeping or like customer service or like social media management or, uh, you know, video editing or web development or whatever. You can just look at one of these lists where there are certain businesses that need those services and you can market to them uh, and gain business from them. Yeah. And if you have no business, you have no fixed costs. You just have a website, right? Uh, a virtual number online. It's pretty cheap. I bought a 1-800 number for a hundred dollars and then to keep it's like $3 a month. And then maybe like one cent and a half per minute to receive inbound calls, you know, and then you got an email, you, you, you get Google, uh, work suite. I think it's called, and that's like $6 a month per, per user. It gives you a Gmail and then what, if you use Google domains, uh, having a domain with them is 12 bucks a year with the privacy included. If you go to name cheap, it's like eight, $9 with the privacy included. So like on a month to month basis, like, what are you really paying? Like 10 bucks to run your shit? 10, 11, less than 15 bucks. Nobody yeah. fucking calls you, you know? Okay, you spent one time, let's say $500 on a one page website. So you've spent 500 bucks one time. You spent $100 on a 1-800 number, that's 600. You get a Google workplace email situation, that's like five bucks. So it's like, you may come up with $600 one time and then every month it's like 15 bucks. Is that affordable for most people? Absolutely. You know, so you're, five, you're 600 down, 15 per month. And then when you're 15 per month, you say, okay, how long can you survive at 15 per month? A long fucking time, you know? Yeah. Right. So, so, you know, Pedro, I think a lot of our, our listeners, they're in this situation where maybe they have this nine to five sort of what you mentioned earlier, and they, they, they want to start a small business, right? Or, or get into their first rental property. But for, for this sake, I love that you were talking about the businesses. So, so let's stay on that track. Like, how do they determine what's correct for them? Right? Because I think to, to, to your point, sometimes we let our passion like drive us and, and that's not necessarily going to make us any money, right? Um, so, so how do they determine like, which way do I go? Cause I, I see a guru over here selling this course and doing well, but then I get shiny object syndrome because I'm looking in every corner. Right. So, so what advice do you have for our listeners 
going through that? I mean, there's always going to be people selling you online courses on this, that, and the third. It's just pretty simple. Do you have a legitimate problem you're solving? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, um, what's something that I bought online? I bought somebody's course online for $1,000. And the course explained on how to bid on government contracts. And I don't even feel bad to spend $1,000 on that. Right, because I'm I'm interested in bidding on local and federal government contracts, and I don't know even where to start. And then somebody made a course, put it online themselves, and I bought it. You know, but they're they're solving a problem for me, you know, like and it's much cheaper than any type of knowledge passed down in university. It's like super actionable, right? Um, I've also bought databases. So I've tested out databases. At, at one point I was marketing to some uh, marketing companies and I bought a database from a website and it cost me $4,000. But they solved the problem for me. They literally put all my potential customers in a database for me, you know? I bought other databases for $2,000 and I've gotten all my money back. You know, but they're solving a problem for me. So um, we, we have a business that provides virtual assistance. Some people don't want to take calls, don't want to respond to email, don't have time to recruit people, don't even know where to recruit people, you know, don't know how to compensate them or what to do. And then we simplify that where we just say, we did all that shit for you, show up to interview, and then we'll assign them to you every day. I'm solving their problem. So you really need to be clear, like, whose problem are you, are you solving? Like, don't, don't they say that uh, whether, whether, whether it's legal or not, or whether it's, you know, you agree with what people are doing for business or not, is irrelevant. Well, you do have to admit that people don't just magically give you money, you solve a problem. Like even drug dealers solve a problem and prostitutes solve a problem. You know what I mean? Whether you agree with those problems or not, whatever. But the thing is like, they're providing something in exchange, right? So uh, you need to think, what are you providing in exchange, right? Are you providing housing? Are you making somebody's life simpler because you, you're, you clean their house or you clean their apartment, you babysat their kid, you, you help them find uh, a short-term rental in Punta Cana. I had an Airbnb, the dude got paid. He, you know, they have apartments everywhere. They helped the owners of the apartments. Thank you for listening to the Real Rent Estate and Small Business and Management Consultant Show. Stay there brought for to you by Quetzal nice Capital Group. And they got paid. You know what I mean? Quetzal Capital Passively. Group works with investors nationwide so, uh, to invest in real estate as while as also looking to add value in the communities where they operate. The problem, then that's, Quetzal that's the Capital Group. The next step would be client to find centered, who's already done data driven, result oriented. Mm-hmm. Connect with us online really at KetzalCapitalGroup.com. You know, uh, clone and refine. There it is. Clone and refine. I'm being real with you. If you look at countries, like before before Japan was the best high quality, uh, after World War II, after the country was all bombed, um, they were known as the copycat products. You know, like China, uh, as the copycat products, low quality, this, that. Because... Germans would invent like a, a new technology, you know, and then Nikon would copy it and then make like a cheap version of it. And then while they were getting better and better at it, you know, they developed their own technology, but first they copied an existing model, you know, like blatantly. Yeah. And, and they started improving on that. Why? Because if you don't know what the hell you're doing and somebody already has a profitable business doing exactly that, the first version of you should be to copy exactly what the fuck they have. Yep. And then while you run it, you can see what to change, how to edit, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. Mm-hmm. That's, that's just real. Like if, if you look at it historically, that's why I love history. The, the first people to have uh, a nuclear weapon was the United States, right? Then the second country was the Soviet Union. What'd they do? You think they started researching from scratch? They fucking use espionage 
they they kind of stole the plans whatever they couldn't steal they kind of put the missing puzzle piece together but they didn't have to start from scratch they just stole it and then they improved yeah the other the other iterations you know what i mean so in the same way you got to act like these countries and you have to copy what's already existing and then move on from there saves you a lot of time and a lot of money actually one of the biggest problems america has right now is these hackers you know so let's say they you can check online america will spend like 10 billion dollars on a new fighter jet and then chinese north korean or whatever hackers will hack into like one of the government computers and steal like all the blueprints and then they they can build it do you understand mm. so um one if it's a legitimate need two uh you got to clone something to start off i love that you know and you made me think this is why i like i love talking to you because you always get my 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 brain thinking right that what you just mentioned at the end there i've talked to some execs at like like burger king and whatnot and they 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 have this funny saying right they they call it the mcdonald's effect Right. Mm -hmm. McDonald's spends all this money on marketing and determining where exactly what corner to position a new store. And then if, if you've ever looked around, there's probably like a Wendy's and a Burger King right around the corner. Yeah. Right. And you and maybe like a 7-Eleven down the street. And we laugh when we see that. But it's it's like it's sort of what Picasso said. Right. Good artists copy, great artists steal. Yeah. Right. Which is like exactly what, what you're saying. So listening, you listening you to say all of that, I think is just amazing. Bro, what, one thing is what you feel comfortable with. And one thing and another thing is what's real. Yeah. You feel, you feel me? It's like, I wish it wasn't this way. I wish it was all kumbaya type shit. <laughs> but the reality is what it is. So uh, that's, that's next. So service. After it's a service, you've got to make sure to see that it's something you can provide remotely. Beyond that, you have to find the market leader, whoever is, even if it's a niche, the market leader in that niche and see what they got, look at their website, look at their pricing, call them, get a quote from them, see what their invoices look like, look at their dashboard when you log into their website, you know, and then just be like, oh, this works like this, this works like that, this works like the third. Okay. And then you're like, oh, I want to build something like that. And then you build it. Yeah. You know, but you know, maybe you don't have uh, enough money to build the site like they have it, but that's not a problem. The first car just started off with like one seat, like no, no suspension, like no, no roof. You know, if you look at Carl Benz with the first car, bro, just got like a motor. They had to crank it to start and you know, every iteration of every, you know, year, it just, they started adding features and adding features to it, but right. it got the dude, it was better than walking. You know what I mean? It yeah. Started somewhere. Right. Um, so that's that I recommend what I'm saying, uh, in regards to low fixed costs, because by any chance, do you know, do you know how long an alligator can go without eating? Sounds like 12 months plus. Can, can you Google it? Do you know? Do you want me to Google it for you? Is it probably a couple of years, right? I'll tell you right now. An alligator can go without eating two to three years. You can just Google it, right? Why? Because they're cold blooded and they can shut down parts of their brain we can shut off certain organs when they don't eat and whatnot um so they can last a drought you know what i mean mm. uh, in the same way you know if if your business is not built to last the drought then you can die like for example if you look at all the restaurants during covid in the places where they had to shut down you know, a lot of restaurants didn't make it because they couldn't last that long being shut down, but still having to pay rent. Yeah. Right. Or bars or nightclubs, you know, or a barbershop or whatever. Right. Uh, or hotels. I've seen hotels shut down, you know, because they had no business. 
So if if you have low fixed costs, you can continue basically indefinitely. Mm-hmm. And then it could be like a seed, you know, like if 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 the conditions aren't conducive to growing, the seed just chills. And then the moment you put it in the ground with some water and you add some sunlight, a little green thing comes out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> right? So like, and you could have left that for years and years in your, you know, in a little Ziploc or whatever. Yeah. Right? Nature is amazing. How does it do it? I don't even know. But I'm saying like, we really need to work on biomimicry, right? Whatever we see, uh, we try to imitate in some way, right? Because at the end of the day, um, business is, a business is an organization. It's an organism, right? It has different parts, vital parts to it. You know, it could have accounting, customer service, project coordination, blah, blah, blah. Those are like the vital organs to it. Mm -hmm. So um, we, it's interesting to see how animals react with each other and what strategies they use to survive and it's it's cool to see what countries use against each other and use to survive and then you can extrapolate that and you can be like oh you know for this for this organism who's a lot weaker he uses this strategy against the people who are bigger etc right so i think that uh that's kind of interesting what else could be actionable for you so i brought up service business B2B, because you can actually make a database on your own if you felt like it, either yourself because you're disciplined or hire a virtual assistant to whatever your, whoever your ideal client is to make a whole database of it. Um, we keep it low because we're like the alligators where we could go like two, three years without eating. It's not going to affect us. If the food comes back, we start eating like, like nothing happened, but everybody else is dead. You know what I mean? Because they couldn't last the drought. Yeah. Um, and then other than that, um, even if you get through all that, then you have to make sure that, um, that you delegate appropriately and use systems, whether it's either software and people to not become a slave to your own business. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause at one point, I was excited enough that any business was even working on a month to month basis, but then I was working a lot. And then I was just like, yo, the whole reason why I started a business was to be free. Yeah. But now I'm actually less free than I've ever been. Right. So then I really had to reevaluate how I was organizing my business so I could be free. And the best thing that helped me with that was to make an organizational chart. Mm -hmm. And then just be like, if I was not allowed to be in this business, what would be the positions that I would need filled? Right? Yeah. And then I would act accordingly, whether I needed to hire somebody part time, whether I needed to certain positions I couldn't fill part time, because I didn't have the money. So certain positions I feel uh, I filled on a commission basis. I said, hey, if we get something from here, instead of me paying you like whatever, I'll pay you X percentage of whatever comes in. But then that person is super happy because they know they're incentivized because when we close, they get paid. Uh, so I don't really have to worry about fixed costs with them. Mm. You know, Obviously, there gets a point where you get enough where it just makes sense to hire somebody for it. But before, you could just profit split with people. Yeah. Keep, keep right um other than that uh it takes a lot of persistence and it's it's like you know you you see all these gurus and everything talking about how you can make a ton of money super quick i wish it was like that for me um it hasn't been i've really had i've really gone through periods where I was totally going to crash and burn, uh, but then I've been able to pivot or do certain things uh, differently and survive. I've had to learn every single position in the company because before you delegate it, you need to know how it's done so you can train somebody else how to do it appropriately. Yeah. So 
I had to do marketing. I had to do customer service. I had to do project coordination. I had to do HR. I had to do bookkeeping. You know, um, I had to test my own sites and do all that before I could get somebody in to to help me with any of those things. Mm-hmm. So um, you have to have persistence, uh, but you it's worth it for me, especially in America. I think the dream isn't dead at all. You know, it's infrequent because not a lot of people actually get what they want on a day to day. Um, I'm really happy I've been able to execute it. Um, but uh, you need to be very clear with what you want. And what I wanted was just freedom. Mm-hmm. I want I wanted the luxury of waking up whenever the fuck I wanted to wake up, period. And then look online and have everybody checked in or just wake up and just see that I just made more money, but I didn't physically do anything, Mm. you know? And then while I'm there, I'm like, oh shit, I just happen to be in Switzerland, you know? I just happen to be in Punta Cana. I just happen to be in Madrid. I just happen to be in Japan. And it's allowed me to live wherever I want to live. Uh, but I've actually made more money sometimes on a month to month basis being outside of America than mm-hmm. being in America. Facts. You know, I love that, you know, and, and you may, you're making me think about, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Albert Einstein, right? So physicist, developer of uh, the theory of relativity. And he, he, he says something that, sort of relates to what you just said where it's you know it's not that i'm so smart it's just that i stay with problem problems longer mm-hmm. um and to the point of perseverance that you mentioned right i think that that sometimes to the point of of shiny object syndrome we think we're going to get rich really quickly right and, and the first time we get we get kicked in the behind like we don't know if, if we should get up mm. right yeah i've tried a lot of things for the reason i i have you know, multiple sources of income now that are delegated is because I tried a lot of shit, mm-hmm. you know? And then from each one, I learn like a new lesson, right? And then anything you do every day, you get better at. If you cook yeah. every day, you're going to be nasty. You're <laughs> going to be nasty with it. You're going to be great. Yeah. You know, anything you do continually, you get better at. So um, if you continue to think about businesses, uh, you'll come up with some great business ideas. And then the first time you make a lasagna, let's say you're just looking at the recipe, you're checking the temperature, but if it's like the 500th time you made a lasagna, you know what I mean? You just go by heart and you just do it. Yeah, it's like right? when the, the Latino moms, they they, they touch the comal, right? <laughs> they, they just know when it's ready. You know, so that that's part of it um but uh i'm trying to think something that could add value if i were to talk to myself um i would tell myself like at 18 to worry less about appearances because like the all the people who were like super cool like during high school or whatever they're not so cool no more you know what i mean that's one and you know uh i spent money on a lot of stupid shit but um i was also what's important for me to i was all i was able to keep all of my productive efforts in my 20s mm. so literally like every single effort i put in in my 20s i kept in my company right and, and it's it's an asset that i could sell now yeah you know so literally i obviously the irs also they always get a percentage you know what i'm saying (laughs) but overall outside of the irs i get to keep the fruits of my labor you know even if that labor happened eight years ago yeah you know so i think that's kind of cool um for people who already have jobs who you know maybe 30, 40, 50, I don't know who listens exactly. Um, I think that if you have a job, you can always start something on the side if you want. Um, And all you need is a website. 
And in regards to an idea, you can look, uh, you can look online for business ideas. Um, you just need to have the will and you need to keep the image super clear in your mind because the things that are worth having sometimes are difficult because I heard something that said that the, the walls are uncomfortable to get over kind on purpose to see who really wants it. Wow, that's powerful. You know, like that's, that's just kind of it. And I know that personally how I was living prior was so, it was so ungratifying for me that I rather die in pursuit of my ideal than to, to live my misery quietly. You know what I mean? So I'm going guns a blazing and if it didn't work out, I felt the satisfaction that I tried, you know? Yeah. And uh, if, if you go with that mentality, like get rich or die trying, you know, um, you can make it through a lot of emotional moments and uh, a lot of times where you don't see the end of the tunnel, uh, but one day you'll wake up and you'll literally have everything that you hoped to have before and you'll notice two things you'll notice you have everything that one that was your craziest dream and then you'll notice that you're still not happy because mm. now you want to make double that yeah <laughs> life's so, funny like that right it is obviously your day-to-day -day life is much better like you feel really good but then also you're just like oh man i make a hundred I, I'm gonna make 200. Oh shit, I made three. I now I need to make five. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, if, if you're competitive enough to actually make it in business, you're gonna just stay competitive, mm -hmm. you know? And that's never gonna leave you. That's why you see these business owners, they're like 80, they're still like doing new projects, new developments, this, that, because people always wanna have the next thing that they're going to do, the next project, the next mountain they're going to conquer. I love that. I love that. And, you know, I, I, I want to jump into our, our quick response round here because I think I've held you a little too long today. But, you know, it's, it's always amazing to chat with you because you just, you're, you're just a wealth of knowledge, right? You know, Warren Buffett, he says, somebody is sitting under the shade today because somebody planted a seed 20 years ago. Absolutely. And it, 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 I actually, like, I wrote this down here, right? You kept saying the fruits of my labor, the fruits of my labor. And I think that that's an, like an amazing thing to think about, right? Mm -hmm. Where I think we always think short term. Absolutely. And oh my gosh. Your point, right? You got to have the end in mind, right? Know what you're working towards, what you're working for, right? All of these different freedoms that you mentioned before. So man, kudos to you. Cause I think, I think that is powerful. I think that is powerful. Yeah, yeah it's, I think, uh, you know, regardless of what people want to do, if, if they, it would be revolutionary for them. Let's say you just make 30 grand per year, you know? But if you made 30 grand per year passively, it would change your mind. Your mind would blow the fuck up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, even if you, you know, what's that, like 2,500 per month or 2,000 something per month, if you really got it and you just had to put in like one hour a day, Monday through Friday for it, like, um, it would change your damn mind because you could go anywhere. And then you notice that outside of America, 98% of the places outside of America are cheaper than America. Yeah, it's that whole geo arbitrage idea, right? No, but even if you do stay in America and you just want to raise your kids, it's just like the luxury of, uh, you know, waking up at 10 or 11, whenever the hell you want to wake up and then having points in your schedule that you want to take care of, but not having, you know, somebody being like, oh, you have to get this done or like, no, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, but you have to have self-discipline, enough self-discipline to execute and monitor that your systems are working well. But my cousin always says this, kudos to him in Spanish. He says, mejor arriba con presión que abajo con depresión. 
<laughs> right? So roughly translated, it's like, I'd rather be on top with pressure than on the bottom with depression. Yeah. Uh, so um, I, yeah, I'd rather, I rather the stress that being the CEO brings than the stress of that I hate my job. Yeah. You know, obviously I have a whole lot of staff members and I always tell them that I want them to enjoy working with me because they spend eight hours a day, a third of their day with me. And the last thing that I would want is, uh, you know, to have someone who it's, uh, it's a living hell to, to work with, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we should really look into what our daily happiness is. Because at the end of the day, we live days, day to day. We're always thinking about what we're going to achieve in the future or what happened in the past. And then I, I feel like I've been a lot happier and a lot more successful uh, when I focus on what my day to day experience is. Mm. You know, it's like, oh, I'm free to do this on a day to day. I can go here if I want a day to day. Uh, I, I can read, I can learn German because, you know, my girl's from Switzerland, so I've been practicing some German. I can do all this shit like in the middle of the day or I could read whatever book I want. Uh, and I feel like, you know, even if you gave me twice the amount of money that I make, but you told me that I needed to, you know, report, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't report nine to five. <laughs> You know, because I really, tr I really treasure uh, my freedom to do whatever the fuck I want on a day-to-day -day basis. And besides that, I have confidence in myself to be able to reach uh, whatever level that you would offer me, yeah. you know, um, but uh, you'd be surprised after you reach a certain income level, it's the same shit, you know? So like there's a study somewhere that says like that after 70K, you know, each additional dollar makes less of an effect on like your, your lifestyle, you know? Um, yeah, I was, uh, uh, I was reading Ray Dalio's book and he talked about the correlation between income and happiness and exactly what you said. He's like, you get to a point and, you know, a certain amount of money no longer makes you that much happier, right? I've seen realtors that make like 300,000 USD and then they're fucking miserable and they haven't seen their kids, you know, and then they look at you and then they're just like, oh, I've been putting in stupid hours. I hate this shit. I haven't seen my fucking kids. And then, um, you know, I feel bad, but uh, those people, they can learn to leverage their business in a way that uh, where they're freer. It's totally possible. If you want to do that, you need to read the E-Myth. The mm -hmm. E-Myth is the shit in regards to delegating your business appropriately, not becoming a slave to your business. It's, it talks about McDonald's and the franchise model. Um, and I think it's highly recommended. It just comes highly, it's all about documenting all the processes in your business. So, uh, you can have uniformity of output. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I, I love that. I love that. And, and to our listeners, I hope you all, you all take what uh, our friend has said today and really, really take action on that, right? Be like, you know, Bruce Lee says, be like water, right? Be malleable, take shape to your environment. Because I think that Pedro just shared some powerful, actionable stuff. And Pedro, again, you know, it, it's been a pleasure getting to know more about you and I'm, my jaw is just like dropping at how many, how many golden nuggets you drop. But I do want to jump into our quick response round because I think that, you know, these are topics that our listeners definitely appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, first question for you here, if you lost it all today, what would you do? Um, if I lost it all today, I'd go to freelancer.com. I'd hire a web developer to make a website for like $400. I'd get an online number either through Google Voice or through a website called Sadarma. And I'd pay like $3 per month for that. And I have a phone number. I'd go to Gmail. I'd pay like $6 a month for a Gmail with my domain info at whatever my domain is. And then I'd start a service business and it'd be B2B. And if I had no money, 
I'd go to the public library and I'd take a flash drive with me and I'd work on a database and I'd put it on an Excel file. But if I had at least another $5 per month, you know, woof, we're going to get to 20 per month right now, then I'd, I'd go get a CRM, like less annoying CRM, uh, dot com, and I would put all the entries in the CRM and then I would mail email all the contacts in the CRM. I would mail the contacts in the CRM and I would maybe call them. And then I, if I got no business, I wouldn't lose a dime. And if I got business, I'd be swimming in it. <laughs> nice. I love that. Going forward, what do you have planned in your business and why? Uh, right now I have planned in my business um, working a lot on web development. Uh, we have full-time web developers in the business. Uh, one of our business has an app. Uh, the thing I want to focus on web development is because apps came out in like 2011. If you check when the iPhone came out, uh, maybe like 2007. So the first apps, like, let's see, I, iPhone launch iPhone launch date was in 2007, right? My app went live uh, for my translation business this year. So I was telling the developer, I was like, yo, iPhones came out in 2007. We had our first app live in 2021. We're years behind, you know, 2007 minus 2021. We're 14 years behind the major companies in regards to technological development. Now, if you don't have an app, the apps are not even the future. Apps are like the present, like, you know, VR, virtual reality, and all that stuff is the future. What Just a website, that's the 90s. You know what I mean? The website's the 90s. Uh, app is 2007 and beyond. Um, and the future is about like artificial intelligence and VR and all that stuff. So uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera, cryptocurrency. So we wanna make sure that on the web development end, we don't get left behind uh, because uh, it's a differentiating factor. It's like you're competing, but you, you wanna have the most up-to-date technology when you're competing. It's yeah. like if you have an army and you, you get a machine gun, but the other armies don't have, haven't developed it yet. You know what I mean? Or you develop a new type of missile system that they haven't developed yet. Gives yeah. you like an edge technologically. Yeah. Um, like for example, before everybody started working home base, I started working home base like in 2011, right? People started really working home base after the pandemic but I got a nine year head start where I was saving office rent for nine years where like certain competitors of mine, they, they were went traditional and they had to have an office and they did this. So they had higher fixed costs where I could save that money and, and throw it into advertising quicker. Yeah. So even though they had an advantage over me, I could close the gap more, mm. you know what I mean? Quicker. Um, so yeah. I think, what was it? Yeah, I forgot what the question was. I love was. that. I love that. But if, if you could give our listeners one piece of advice today, what would it be? It would be to read. Stop being a fucking bum and read. <laughs> There's audiobooks. You should get Audible on, on your phone. You should play audiobooks while you go to sleep. You know, I actually work a lot on... I, if, if I were to tell you, you need to read Psycho-Cybernetics for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, because I could sit here and tell you, oh, you should read um, Business at, at the Speed of Light by Bill Gates, which you should. But I think that the, the biggest problem I've had, the biggest convulsions that I've had, like, oh my God, it's, it's been with my self-image. Like I had serious self-image problems going from employee to self-employed. Like, I didn't know where the money was going to come from. I had panic attacks. I didn't know if I was going to make it. Um, then going from sole proprietor to actual business owner with a whole bunch of employees, it takes a different 
mentality. It takes a different paradigm. You need a paradigm shift and it's not easy and it doesn't come in one day and you need to hold the image in your mind and you need to work a lot with auto suggestion. Mm. A lot of auto suggestion work, a lot of, you know, um, putting up your goals, you know, in your room, in, on your fridge, in front of your damn toilet, like everywhere where you could see oh, on the door where you leave your house, your goals there, because whether you notice it or not, you know, big companies and the government auto suggest to you all the time, you know, um, whether it's the military telling you to join, whether it's Coca-Cola telling you to quench your thirst with a Coca-Cola, whether, you know, it's McDonald's or whether it's whatever company, Apple, Amazon, et cetera. They all pay tremendous amounts for billboards and they pay tremendous amounts for YouTube ads that only last like three seconds, but you saw the logo and it affects you psychologically, whether you want to or not. So originally when you set like an income goal or you set a goal in general, if it's an ambitious goal, not even you're going to believe that you can do it, you know, and I, I've told myself, well, who are you playing? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so like the more you're exposed to the goal, you know, the more normal it becomes to you, yeah. right? And that doesn't mean you don't have to work towards it. You continue working towards it. Um, but it's been a way that I've been able to break through my old self-image into a new self-image, mm. right? And I, for people who don't understand, it may sound weird, but like self-image is one of the most powerful things you can work on because you act according to whatever your self-image is. Mm. So if you don't think you of yourself as a business owner, you're never going to start acting like a business owner or you'll self-sabotage yourself. You know, sometimes you're actually doing well and then for no reason you start fucking up and there's nobody to blame but you, you know? And it'll happen in, you know, some people can't have healthy romantic relationships and like literally everything's going well with the girl, this, that, and the other. And then they find a way to fuck it up somehow, you know, but the same thing happens with, with business or school, you know, the good students have an A student self-image and you see that they don't get nothing but A's because it's just like, they, they feel antsy if they don't get the A and they'll do whatever they need to do to get to it. And some Kids are just C students and they literally barely make it, but they always get a C somehow, you know, they pull <laughs> it out in some way, you know? So um, the same thing applies with our income. And when you're a business owner, it's kind of funny because you can have hundreds and thousands of customers, but you make like the same amount of money every month, you know, mm -hmm. similar, similar. And then you're like, okay, all this money is coming from like, you know, 500 to a thousand different people, sometimes a little bit, sometimes a lot, but they're, they're not on subscriptions with you or something like that. And some, somehow you make like kind of like the same amount of money every month. Yeah. You know? How is that? Right. And a lot of it has to do with your self image. And I believe a lot in, in, you know, in attracting the, uh, the appropriate thoughts to manifest what you want in your life. You know, whether it's bogus or not, I don't give a fuck. The reality is that it works for me. And even if I have to lie to myself, I just care about the end result. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if, if you have to literally hypnotize yourself with a fucking lie, but then you end up believing your lie and you end up executing and then whatever, right? Yeah. <laughs> So Friends, I, I hope you all are uh, taking this to heart, right? Sir Isaac Newton said, if I can see far, it is because I've stood on the shoulders of giants, right? Mm -hmm. So people that are in the positions that you want to be. They all wrote a book, by the way. Everybody who's in the position that you want to be, they all wrote a book. Like, yeah. oh, I want to be president. All the presidents wrote a book. <laughs> I want to be a, a business magnate. They all wrote a book because they all get old. And they're all like, damn, I got all these billions, hundred billion dollars. What should I do? Let me write this book for the poor people that are making it. They, and they literally write books. Yeah. And they tell you what they were going through and they give you tips. 
Yeah. So the biggest thing I would say is read because literally everything you want to do, somebody wrote a book about it. Yeah. Back to back, back, back to what Pedro told us, right? Don't reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. Absolutely. Not at all. I so, don't want to be known for, oh, he was the first dude to do this or that. Right, right now, you know, I just want the result. Like, you know, I want, I, if I want to travel to Europe, I don't need to reinvent the whole damn airplane. You know what I mean? <laughs> they already made one, son. <laughs> so, Pedro, again, man, it's been a pleasure getting to chat with you. How can our listeners get to know more about you and connect with you? I mean, first off, you know, it's nice if they subscribe to Kid Style Capital, you know what I mean? That's one. Second off, I just have an Instagram, which is Three Freedoms Group, um, the number three uh, in Freedoms Group. Uh, and that's how, if they want to follow me, they can go ahead and follow me. Um, I've been looking to uh, going with this whole Three Freedoms Group concept. I've been looking to get Three Freedoms Group into like an incubator, mm. right? Like a startup incubator um, where uh, we could take people who know nothing, get them uh, with, with an idea and then kind of um, partner on that idea if we believe in that particular idea, you know? So we're currently uh, working on that. And if they want to follow us, that's how uh they would do that i love that my friend once again thank you so much for hopping on the show as a guest and i really look forward to to seeing your continual success and to hopefully having you back on the show because you know how to drop the golden nuggets man no i, I appreciate it bro just know capitalism is exploitative as fuck and you know you either gotta learn how to roll with the punches or you're gonna get punched yeah repeatedly you know, so um, people say that capitalism is, is hard, but the reality is that life is hard. Yeah. You know? So um, we need to understand the ills of capitalism. We need to understand the benefits of it because this is a system that we have currently. Yeah. So we need to deal with this reality. So I think it's um, important um, if you want to succeed at something, you have to know how it functions. Yeah. So you can align yourself to its benefits and then diminish what you think are unjust penalties. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they, they literally got, they literally got us playing a game. They didn't even give us instructions for bro. <laughs> yeah. You understand? Like they literally started the monopoly game. They, they gave us no money. Cause at least in monopoly, you got to start with 1500 and then they don't tell you the rules. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you mad because you don't have any money. Right. But they literally don't teach you this stuff. I don't know whether it's on purpose or not. I'm not like a conspiracy theorist about it. The reality is they, they just throw you out here and they don't give you any instruction. Yeah. So if you want to do anything in the game, you got to read the rule books. So best of luck to everybody in that regard. And I hope all of you can have time freedom, location freedom, financial freedom, but always held back by health, love, and happiness in the, in the present. That's always important. All My right. man. We'll chat soon, buddy. So, Thanks so much. All right. Thank you, bro. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate and Small Business for Management Consultant Show brought to you by Quetzal Capital Group. Quetzal Capital Group works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also looking to add value in the communities where they operate. Quetzal Capital Group, client-centered, data-driven, result-oriented. Connect with us online at quetzalcapitalgroup.com.